Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Gamer Pups, and uh, on today's very special episode, uh, we are talking about uh, Marvel's gr latest and greatest, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, we have two guests today. Um, we have, wait, not, no wait, it's not Captain Falcon, you're right, thanks Star Shadow for that funny face, because it's just Falcon, not Captain Falcon, but anyhow... There's Star Shadow here. He's a regular of ours in our Dear Knee game. And then we have Gamer Dad. You put Captain Falcon up there. I did put Captain Falcon. Well, fuck me. I fucked that one up. Cool. Oops. That's why this is a podcast. We don't really do videos on this. We are so credible right now. <laughs> People are going to listen to everything we want to say about this. Um. So we're going to talk about... We're just going to shoot the shit, talk about uh, the general flow of the episode, what, what we're going to do. So if you yeah. haven't watched the first episode... <laughs> of uh falcon and the winter soldier then by all one. means stop this podcast and or twitch stream and go and watch it uh otherwise spoilers. you're about to get spoilers all right i think the overall um i would say the overall feeling of this episode is guilt guilt between both characters right they're all they're both going through their own independent journey um definitely on bucky's side but I also feel like uh, like Sam has a lot of guilt on his own shoulders. So what do you guys think overall? Before we go into the, the point by point, just the overall summary of the episode, what do you guys think? Well, I think Sam's has a lot more to do with struggling to not be able to fit in after a five-year blip. His whole struggle is literally around like, hey, he doesn't really have exactly a real purpose anymore at least with his family and everything else. And he's like trying to like make do and do his own little like side gigs uh, and put more reality to what's like going on afterwards. And Bucky after the Avengers where he kind of got to be a substitute hero is just a civilian now. And he's kind of just not. And now he's kind of having to face all the issues of all that. I, I don't know. I more saw what Bucky trying to deal with his, all the trauma that he went through with being the winter soldier and him sort of almost beginning to open up about everything and trying to make amends for all the th th things that he did. Um, I I think I think you guys are are right on that. You know, uh, both of them both of them were blipped, right? Um, and both of them were snapped away. So, um, both of them have different. They're both coming back to different things, and like Bucky is now a civilian he's been pardoned um he has like absolutely no you know steve was his was his friend and oh, we don't still never really know where he's at uh where steve is at and so bucky is really kind of all alone in the world where sam on the other hand sam you know while well, he was snapped and he he eventually did come back um he also he has a family. He has people that he can connect with. And so he actually has a little bit more um, uh, connection to this world as where Bucky does just really is just really trying to make connections with people that he can. And it's really struggling to try to do that. So, um, but both of them, I like this episode because it really establishes some backstory and character for both of them that the movies have just never had time to do. I mean, you know, Bucky was always the bad guy. Um, and then, you know, he was kind of the, just the silent partner there for a little while. And Sam, uh, Sam did get a little bit of character development, but again, I think this, I like the format that Disney is going with because it's going to give these characters a lot of time to develop. And so far the first episode, did a good job at setting up some of the parameters here. There's definitely not many a hundred year, hundred plus year old people alive that know exactly like grew up the same way Bucky did in the world he did, or is also an ex terrorist because of brainwashing. Um, yeah, Russian terrorist, and has has a go to an ass, uh, <laughs> you know. And I think especially with uh, Sam, uh. He's dealing with a different type of abandonment because all of the people that were in his life moved on already. They assumed he was dead. They assumed he was gone and he wasn't coming back. And now he's back. So let's let's move on to a scene by scene. So the episode starts. It's the usual Marvel logo. Um, and 
I am very much perplexed at the op- like the first thing you see is uh, Sam. He is in a very funeral like looking clothing and he's handling the shield and he's going through all these uh these you, you're getting basically the ending of his story and uh and um and Steve Rogers story as of per endgame right so you hear that conversation you have with with them and for a second I didn't know what time we were in and it's going to and it gets explained to us later but um so my first reaction to this scene was uh, just absolute shock because I'm thinking, OK, we ended at Tony's funeral. Right. So now are we moving? It's like it's like, where is he? Is he is he still at Tony's funeral? Is this Steve Rogers funeral? And we just don't know, because I mean, like at some point, fucking Steve Rogers is going to die. Right. So um, so it was a very interesting moment. How did you guys feel about that i will say the two characters that have the biggest and it's one of the characters is not in this show but have their own story that there is unfolding is the two characters that are the basically legacy of the marvel characters that died tony and steve the two leaders of the avengers are both dead they're gone and the people they chose behind them have both passed on the mantle to someone else, even though they were supposed to be the one to take it up. Steve chose Sam and Tony chose Peter. Peter gave it up to someone else and has his own story of what happened because he didn't think he was worthy. That is a good. And now we have another story where Sam also doesn't believe he's worthy and did not take the shield. That's a good point. What do you guys think? Counterpoints? It's been so long since I saw Spider-Man far from home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it's been a while. But, uh, yeah, no, I didn't really get the funeral vibe from that. But apparently a lot of people were saying that that's what they were getting. I think that scene was actually, like, right before he went to take the shield to the Smithsonian. And, um, you know, he was it was it's a little bit of a uh, setting up that he doesn't feel worthy. Um but then they slipped to the the action sequence in the you know uh, in Tunisia um, uh, against the um, French guy whose name is escaping me right now. Um, yeah, I did not. I did not get who that villain was at the time. I'm pretty sure it'll get explained later. But I'm wondering if it's connected to the main villain that was uh, displayed later on in the show. But in the well, movie, I, we do have Rhodey talking with Sam, basically well, telling him that he. He should have done it. We haven't gotten that that part yet. That's no, in, the, in the beginning when they're walking through. With, no, that's at the Smithsonian. Oh, yeah, that's, that's after. It's, oh, okay, Bal- Malazar, the Leaper. Is that his name? Is it? Is it really? Is yeah. It, is it a so, character? um, a villain. Yeah, it's it's actually oh, the, guy uh, the guy from the Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. <laughs> yeah, he was on the he was on the um, the the ship that in the in oh, uh, the Winter Soldier shit. movie. That's him. Yeah. And I was like, because he has no neck, I recognize him right away. And I'm like, um, I was like, cool. <laughs> he can loop into me anytime he wants. Um, but yeah, he was. That's the same. That's the same guy. And I can't, I can't remember his. I can't remember his, his first name. I have to look it up. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's the same guy. So yeah, okay, didn't so we for me either, so, into a yeah. into an action scene. There's a lot of action going on. That like Dad said, it, it's it's happening in Tunisia. Sam is taking the LAD or LSD, some something L- DLS, some shit. Like LAF. That. LAF. Thank you. And yep. uh, and they are, you know, there's some there's some hostages. There's a hostage situation. Some really really cool air combat. Just oh. a lot of over the top, My over husband. the top uh, uh, Marvel action that we all come to love and, 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 and adore. And my husband and I complaining about the physics of the situation as it's unfolding in their air combat and like what, how they're jumping. They're engineers, so they're all like, that's not even possible. You can't do that. That is like so unlikely. Why yeah. do they keep doing that? How are they doing that? Yeah, oh, that the guy's was, name Sam, is, has a, Sam has a wingsuit with an engine strapped to his back. How that's, does any of that make sense? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> We have to expand, I guess, our, our willingness to believe in this imaginary realm here. Suspend your belief. So after uh, Batrock. Batrock is his name. Batrock. 
So after all oh, that okay. craziness, uh, we're we're you know Sam saves his day, all all awesome stuff. Um, noticeably, he doesn't have the, the shield with him. All right, so this is this is in between all that stuff. Uh, you know, he talks to this his friend, and that friend guy. I honestly thought like the way they kind of filmed him. I thought for sure when I saw him enter the scene, I was like, this dude is gonna backstab him. I'm so used to your friends backstabbing you, thanks to like. Thanks to uh, Captain America's part two, like that, like I just can't trust anybody anymore. So I'm sitting here like that dude's gonna back backstab him so bad, but turned out he ended up being a really freaking cool dude. Yeah, and, I, yeah. Later scenes getting his ass completely handed, trying to be a good dude. And he actually is. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, also takes on the mantle of Falcon uh, later. In the comic book series, he actually takes Torres actually takes the mantle of Falcon That's at one awesome. point. Yeah, yeah, he becomes um, Falcon when Sam becomes Captain America. Yeah, That's so, really cool. That is that is that's some, some very clear setup there. there. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. So then after that, we transition to the the big Smithsonian scene, like the the big the big turning point. I would say. In in when it comes down to the to the Captain America mantle, um, which I, I'm just gonna take a quick dip at the end of this episode. But the events that happen in this Smithsonian scene, it's very de- it, it, you know it leaves you very down. But then it's 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 a perfect setup for literally the last five seconds of this episode where I am shitting myself. Um, I definitely think, you know what? I was really glad to see Rhodey in this scene. I was very glad to see that. I like Rhodey's kind of jabs <laughs> that he's getting, because Rhodey's also another person using um, Iron Man's mech suits, but like Falcon is. But is over here basically like, yeah, you should go leave and become Captain America. We need you. But also more of these jabs. It's like, I mean, I'm the one that actually knows how to fly. Maybe I can show you. Joking at him about being the Falcon and stuff. Or in saying that the mantle's better for him to be the flying mech suit. Yeah. But again, Rhodey is a character that also kind of took on the Iron Man uh, War Machine is basically kind of like Iron Man's replacement at the moment as the actual, actual hero. And not the replacement for Stark Industries and his intelligence and everything else that that was passed on to Peter, but Rhodey also saying those words to him, uh, Sam, I felt had more power in that sense, telling him about picking up that mantle and that he he should be doing it, even though Sam was very very much like yeah it's not me it doesn't feel right I he's like that's the first thing that came to mind is it didn't feel right. What do you guys yeah. think about the memorial scene? I mean, the Smithsonian scene, sorry. Honestly, I really wasn't paying much attention to it because I was sort of hyper-focusing on the Captain America comic book cover that was there. <laughs> I, uh, I was paying attention to the cute photos of Bucky on the wall. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's a lot there. There's a lot that's in that, in that scene from, you know, like all the different, like the motorcycle and the shield and the comics and, the you know, just all kinds of stuff that's there. Um, which is all references to, you know, the legacy and the history of Captain America. So it was a great, um, it was a great, you know, callback to, to Steve Rogers and, and, you know, the big banners of him behind and everything. And um, I think it really, you know, you can kind of understand why Sam feels that way. Like he doesn't measure up to, to Steve um, or why he feels he doesn't measure up to Steve. It's hard to, you know, to, step into the shoes of someone is so iconic. Um, and Very true. even though he's done all these great things and he's saved all these people uh, over time, it's just, he, you know, he, he doesn't feel like he's worthy of, of the taking on the mantle. He's gotten beaten up really bad by Ant-Man yeah. several times. So iconic is oh. a good word to, to remember here listeners, because the, the, I, I would say other than guilt being a big, big, thing about this episode another big theme about this episode is icons right and that is a very key thing that's going to happen at the very end of this episode so so stay tuned Mm -hmm. because it we're going to get there and it's going to be wild all right so star shadow you were saying yeah no i was i was i was saying that like on top of all the stuff that we saw in the smithsonian from like 
when he went there in Winter Soldier, there was also a whole bunch of stuff that was added for uh, Civil War and thing from Infinity War onward. Mm, that is true. That That is true. And they had the OG Captain America armor. This is, yep. yeah, this is like the mm-hmm. Captain America armor for when he was in the Avengers, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Because he ended up donning the 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 black Captain America suit during Winter Soldier. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I will say from this point on in the movie, on, I was looking for something that I never exactly found. Because they're pressing the entire time. I can understand Sam's pressure or feeling the need about this whole like weight of someone replacing an Iron well, an Iron Man, uh, Captain America, but I don't understand the rest of the worlds. There's nothing exactly going on right now that I feel constitutes the need for Captain America or why they need that symbol, and it's kind of the piece of this entire episode of, as my critique that I don't feel all the way to the very very final part of it where they're like pressing forward and saying hey we need we needed this so we're doing it now like i'm still like why why and i'm looking for this why do we need captain america why is captain america important now so i think this is kind of discussed right before the smithsonian scene when uh sam was talking to his friend uh torres where uh they were talking about how ever since when people blipped out of existence uh, five years ago, you know, obviously the people who were here took advantage of that. And yes. we kind of saw what that looked like during Endgame. Like, the world was really fucked during Endgame. Yeah. So, uh, and we will, we, we're, we're almost there. We're about to get, we're going to talk about the blip in a couple of minutes. Uh, and uh, and we're going, and we're definitely going to reference WandaVision for this. But, but so the... When people blip back into existence, like now we're kind of returning back to normal, kind of like how the U.S. is trying to pretend that we're going back to normal after Trump COVID. and COVID. Exactly. Right. After you so being locked inside. You, yeah. So when you have like a big, a major thing, like it, it's kind of like people who prospered uh, don't want to go back to the way things were. Yep. They don't want to give up any advantages they got. Um I can see that, but still, I still feel like it's less of a, a superhero crisis in need, and it's more of a humanitarian crisis. Even as bad guys come out, I'm not seeing these big bads. I'm not seeing Hydra. I'm not seeing this these horrible things that constitute Captain America. Well, I think I that's, that's uh, you know, they haven't... We know that there is some... Um, some threat, obviously, from the uh, the what was it the flag, flag, flag shredders, flag smashers, smashers, yeah. flag smashers, yeah. And so I think that is you know that is what you're that's what you're what you should be focusing on, David. Is that they are you know this is the threat is that people thought that the world was better off before. Uh, everyone came back. And so there's this kind of this group that is uh, trying to destabilize the world governments. And, um, but they haven't obviously gotten to the point of like being a critical threat. That's and, true. but it's still like, why, yeah. So why is Falcon not good enough? Why is War Machine not good enough? Why is all the other heroes not good enough? Right well, now? well, we'll get to that. But I don't want to, I don't want to jump to the end yet. Let's just kind of, let's hold it's on. just like, why is Captain America the requirement? <laughs> I don't know. So right after this scene, right after the Smithsonian scene, we get to kind of what seems to me the seems to be to me kind of the main grabbing thing of this episode, mainly because I relate a lot with Bucky in this sense. Um, so you go in. So the next scene, right, is, uh, you know, we're back in the past. This is Winter Soldier. He's going he's doing his missions uh, as a Hydra agent. He's killing all these people. Uh, he does a lot of bad things, and uh, he ends up waking up, and surprise, it's a nightmare. At first, I was a little nervous, because I was like, oh, fuck, is he really going back to that haircut? Like, I don't really want to go back to that haircut again. Like, it was, like, really horrible. But, um, and then you saw the red star on his arm, and I was like, okay, fine, yeah, this, yeah, is yeah. this is um, a nightmare. He ends up killing a character, which ends up becoming extremely important later on in the episode. Um, 
And then he wakes up and then he's talking to his therapist, which this scene right here makes me laugh so much. The therapist scene is incredible because I go I go through therapy myself. So I totally know exactly what Bucky's thinking, what he's going through, what he what like Bucky says things that I wish that I could say to my fucking therapist. Uh, and it's <laughs> awesome. Um, well, you have to also understand that that therapist isn't like, hey, I need help therapist. This therapist is, hey, the government's watching you and we got to make sure you're okay because we're worried you're going to kill people <laughs> therapist. That's true. I think she's more like, uh, what is that called? Um, shit. Par- like a parole yeah, officer. Yeah, much more like deal. a parole. Yeah, you're a civilian now. But a parole therapist? What? A we, parole, yeah, maybe it's a parole therapist of some sort. You know, a parole therapist. We never know if you're going to switch sides on us again, so we're going to watch you. Yeah, I was going to say that scene is um, is comedy gold because he is saying things. He's like, "Oh, oh you with the notebook again?" You know, she starts writing things down, and you're being um, I was rolling, yes. I was rolling, laughing, Since and it's when did you know, you it's like your therapist. I mean, at your clients. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, uh, you know, she was in the trailer, so you know she's gonna where she's gonna reappear. But um, uh, yeah, she's great. She was uh, that the way, the banter between those two was was great, and I especially love the fact that she he was like she's like what are the three things that we said we were gonna do, and he's he's like, and then he starts into this flashback where he was trying to find someone who's a Hydra agent. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I think that list, like he has a list. Uh, I don't, you know, I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but I actually know he shows the list in the, in that yeah, scene, doesn't yeah, he? In that flashback. He does. Mm-hmm. And um, those are all people that, you know, like I think these are all people that he wants to make sure are thrown in jail or are, brought to justice for the shit that they've done. Yeah, he said that um, people he put in power that are now abusing it. And they're yeah. still abusing it. They haven't changed. Yeah. And he feels responsible so far as long as they're abusing it that he needs to correct it. I'd like to draw an yeah. interesting comparison here how both Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes like to keep their things down on a list. They write it down in a tiny little notebook, right? You know when they were born, it's right? It's like, they don't... Well, I know, but I'm saying it's very interesting. <laughs> like, the, the attention to detail on this thing is really good. It is far more realistic for them that Absolutely. they would write things on list. That Absolutely. Would, that wouldn't fit their characters. They're not going to have an iPhone with notes and, like... Or Jarvis telling them back to them. It's <laughs> yeah. like... What, what, are, what well, is Jarvis... <laughs> Is eight of the new no one? Friday's a new one Friday yeah. Friday. Yep, and like Dad said, there's a flashback scene. You see uh, Bucky kind of just, um, you know, basically kind of he's he's clearing his conscience, right? This is a very conscious driven, uh, you know, this is the first time I think that I've ever actually seen Bucky to be vulnerable. And um, I mean, when he's not being chased by fucking superheroes, the government, or you know. Russians like this is the first time you actually just see Buggy just go hey man I'm fucked up and she did reduce him from that point and she's like you know what you're lonely she's like you have no friends you have no one and that's what we were getting at it's like you're lonely you you were completely alone I get that you're alone and you need to work on that that's your real problem not worrying about everything else you need yeah. to worry about being alone <laughs> and yeah fixing but I do I do but I do love the way he takes down the Marjorie Taylor Greene character in the in the uh, in the you know that's it's just great. So, you think she's a Hydra agent? Nah, I don't think so, man. I I don't know. I can't trust anybody. Thanks to the Winter Soldier movie. Are we like, actually worrying more about sword agents now? <laughs> right after this, uh, this scene, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more exposition on Bucky. You kind of see that he's got a like an older gentleman friend, which is. Not that different from Steve Rogers, because I think Steve Rogers, when he was adapting to everything post uh, the ice, he also was hanging out with older individuals. So this is, again, perfect attention to detail. Here's he gets set up on a date and all that stuff. All that stuff, we kind of kind of get skip. I mean, it's a lot of exposition for Bucky and it's it's great things for him. But the interesting part here is Mr. Nakashima's son. That was that was a gut punch. That was that was a big gut punch when he found out who his son was. It was just like, 
and, and it kind of made it kind of made sense with what we saw with his nightmare flashback when we first saw him in the show. Just him killing killing the guy just for being there, and then cutting back to this, and it's like, oh, he's trying to make up for what he did then, and it's like, all right. So Bucky's no, very much not. chasing his conscience. He's not focused he really on himself, is. making it. <laughs> he is currently chasing everything, trying to fix his world as of wrong. Which makes me worry that there's going to be a critical point when Bucky gets to something he can't fix, because I don't. Well, we do know that we do know that Zemo's coming back, and we know that there's going to be some tension between the two of them. So that is true. That is true because I think Zemo did kind of uh, definitely fucked him up. That's a personal thing, that's for sure. Well, all Zemo really did was use the code words to activate him. He also framed him for killing, uh, blowing up the UN summit in the Winter Soldier as well. Um, let's see. No, that was Civil War. I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, Civil War. Let's move us forward yeah. and from this point and show us the importance of the next six, well, five episodes after this. That Sam and Bucky, in a way, need each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Sam. Brown well, chicken, brown cow. <laughs> Bucky, Bucky needing that friend, that other person, extremely bad. And Sam needing that grounding to an identity attached to Captain America to be what he needs to be, which Bucky yeah. is that other person. So they're going to connect in that degree, to that way. And they're, 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 I don't know how or what yet that's going to fully bring them together, but I'm assuming it's going to be the flag dudes. The, yeah, probably, that's probably, that, I, I'm, I think it's safe to say, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but I, it's definitely a theory. It's theory territory, right? So I definitely think the Flag Smashers and Zemo are connected. Well, I actually think I changed my mind. I don't think... I think they're both going to be upset about the announcement at the end of the first episode, and that might be actually what causes them to come together. That is true, yeah. <laughs> because both of them don't seem very... High, like, he, Sam's literally... Okay, we'll get yeah, to that. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. All right, so... So, Bel- Bel- uh, Bel- Betrock and Zemo have a relationship in the comics, so they... Um, they have worked with each other in the past, so it could be a pretty easy setup to, I mean, they're all terrorists, right? So, um, and bad guys. So they, they have worked together in the past. So that, that, that may be where that's going now as to why exactly, uh, Batrock was trying to kidnap the, the captain, um, hard to say, uh, you know, the guy that he was, he was actually, um, he had kidnapped in the, in the, in the first scene. Not sure what that was about, and um, but we'll see. We'll see where that leads. Um, so after this scene, after the uh, the the bookie exposition, what he's been doing, his past, and what's haunting him, uh, we get back to Sam. Okay, so Sam he arrives at his family boat in Louisiana, and this is the first time we actually find out when this show is taking place. Okay, so here's the overall timeline. End game happens, Tony dies. You have the funeral. A week after that, WandaVision. Yep. All right. So the events of WandaVision. I thought WandaVision was three weeks. Was it three? It's very soon. We can say that very soon. It's almost immediately after. It's almost immediately after. Okay. So this means that (laughs) Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier is post everything happening in this view. (laughs) New Jersey! And, um, which I don't think actually exists. Um, and no, then, I don't think it does. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then, so you have all of Captain Falcon Winter Soldier, however this happens. And then you have a Spider-Man, um, Far From Home. Because Spider-Man Far From Home is eight months afterwards. Yep. So, it's like a full school year after. It. Right. So now, <laughs> so now we, ha- that's the general timeline that we have now. WandaVision Captain uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and Spider-Man. <laughs> he kept going to say Captain, I Captain Falcon. Because I wanted to be Captain America. Um, so, so yes. say it's Captain Falcon? Yeah, it's Cap- Captain Falcon. Um, so we get we get that little we get that little um, dump on where we are in time. And you find out a little bit more about Sam. Sam's now Sam had Sam's big issue here is that he's stepping up to responsibility post blip post Thanos kind of in a small lull because when you when you kind of look at 
WandaVision and this show and if you kind of see where where uh, Spider-Man is I would say w- within reason the world is kind of in a peaceful place so you're not going to have the Avengers running around doing everything and I know peaceful is a stretch of a word but so I will say WandaVision because it all happens in a blip is mostly only dealing with Wanda's trauma and mm-hmm. very less about the blip until it gets to the end. Yeah, and so... And, that, and the blip is really only related and talked about the agent of so, the S.W.O.R.D. agency and what it impacted. Nothing further, really. We're not talking about these people's lives or what happened before then. We're talking about Wanda coming back and finding a witnessing vision. And five years later, and looking for a vision. And that's, that's, the, that's the relation to the blip. And that's what we deal with here. And this show... With Sam, the boat, the incident, his family is there, there trying to survive with their business, their legacy, their parents being gone, and now losing that, not having the money, not having the things, not having the support, and he has nothing for five years. I think it's interesting when Spider-Man handled this, they kind of treated the blip as something to kind of laugh at, right? Because, yeah, kids that were five years old. It's kind of like, oh, haha, this is weird, right? Like, oh, this person I went to school with is now five years older than me, right? But now, when we look at both WandaVision and and this series, right? Holy shit. I fucking freaked out when they showed how horrific being blipped back into existence were. And I think me and dad definitely made a little, a couple of jokes about this. Like, what if a woman was pregnant and then her baby blipped, but not her, right? Like, do you know what I'm saying? And exactly. Star Shadow has the face that I had when I thought about that. I'm over here like, what if you were flying in an airplane and you got blipped? And then when you blip back, there's no airplane anymore. And you're just like, woo. Exactly. What if you were driving How many a car? in the sky? Exactly. That's that. See, I never Shadow's thought about that face. before. That's oh my what god! I'm th- like, oh my god! Exactly. Oh. What if you were given childbirth and you just blipped out of existence? Like, there's just so many questions here, which is why that hospital scene in WandaVision was so. It was so grabbing because I like, you, you, it's it's treated so delicately in Endgame and in uh, and in um, in Spider Man that you really kind of don't think about those things. Until you see WandaVision, and then you're like, oh my god. It's it's nuts. It's crazy. I, I just, I thought that was really good. And then, so like, so that's the immediate horror. What you then see in this show is the, like, after blip kind of horror. Like, the aftershocks, right? Like, you, yeah. have, you have all these banks that take, you know, advantage of people being gone and all these things. It's... Yeah, so Sam really weird. Sam trying to help his sister is basically the first thing that starts happening. And he's like, Hey, I'm the hero, I can save you. Like, we're not gonna lose this. I say we're not gonna lose this. She wants to sell the boat, give up. She's like, There's no way we can repair this. They end up in a bank, and he's even trying to play his superhero card about being like the Falcon and everything else. And the bank's looking at all stuff and they're like, You have no income for the last five years. I can't give you money. He wasn't there for the last five years. Yeah, and he's like... He he literally did not exist. And then it's like, also, like, what do you even get for being a superhero? And he's like, well, I kind of do it for goodwill. Man, so, like, I... I can't believe... I love that scene, but also hate that scene, because if you haven't picked up the undertones of people of color who face these challenges Mm. every day on a daily basis, like... That was here. Like, Cap, like, at the end of the day, Falcon, Sam, he could have been, he could have been fucking Captain America. He could have been Superman for all, but, but it didn't matter at that time because he was black. Well, it also meant, and like, it just, it's just, he was cool for the wings and all, but he wasn't cool enough for that bank account. (laughs) Do you, uh, I know this is completely unrelated to Marvel, but it was a show we watched last year, and it's definitely related to POC, and it's probably one of the best movie series you could watch related to POC right now. It was fucking amazing. Was um, uh, Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft Country. And in Lovecraft Country, we see the main character over and over and over again try to use his soldier status first over being black in order for people to treat him with respect. Yep. 
and we see Sam and his sister sitting in front of a white banker asking for help, and to which Sam immediately goes to first lean on being a hero before anything else. I find the dichotomy in this scene very interesting because... The sister doesn't want to play the hero card. Nope. She just wants to go. She wants to get the, the loan. She yep. thinks she's good enough to get the loan. But she she thinks she's good enough to get the loan. But she knows. She knows. She knows what she's going up against. So she's not. She, she knows what's going to happen, right? But Sam kind of talked her sweet mouth. I mean, sweet talked her into this. And, like, he's playing his, his superhero card. It was, it was rough because of the whole racial divide like it, it, you are a black woman going to be going up to a white man and asking him for money do you really think it's going to end well like, it's no supposed to be fair but it's i'm it, sorry it's it, it, it's maybe it's uh, even more appropriate in the whole captain america thing and so much of it is constantly a joke on american values and systems and that's probably one of the biggest things in our culture that is like a direct affront face that we have to fucking deal with that we never do and it they kind of set it up very well in that situation. And they made the superhero Falcon drop down and even reduced that it didn't matter all through that because they still made him Falcon. And I think also dissecting reasons why he might not feel like he doesn't deserve the shield might have to do with what society places value on him and what he can do and his value from that. Yep. Dad, your opinions? (laughs) Yeah, it's um, it is a it is a a, a really poignant um, uh, look at how uh, Black Americans and people of color have to deal with uh, you know these kind of these kind of situations. And honestly, it's perfectly written there. Um, you know that the the banker is so excited to meet Sam. And it's asking for yourself. He does it. To, actually, does the selfie. Muscle? Can't touch your muscles. Yeah, and they so no, like he just took a picture. So I'm even asking first. That is you're right. Did, yeah, he, yeah, that that was that was kind of insane. But then at, at the same time, he's like, I can't help you. You know, mm. I don't. It's not that I'm. I I could pull some strings for you. It's just we can't help you. Like, I know you've been a, a valued client of ours for a long period of time, but they kept laying sorry. that all out there that there was actually, there was many reasons that they should have accepted it, but they still said no. He, they had yeah. a longstanding history. He had income up to that point before the blip. It was only missing because of the five. So he had a reason and he had, yeah. he's like, I have contracts that are giving me money. Here they are. And I brought them as proof yeah. and it wasn't enough. Yep. It didn't matter. Yep. So it is. It is a really. It was really well done in that regard. Um, I think that you know, and it's it's a truth that a lot of people have to deal with. That you know, it happens every day in the United States, and it is like Auntie said. It is a really interesting um, look at American values yeah. when we say everyone is equal, unless you're unless you're a person of color. I'm so. very happy that Marvel is taking some of those tones, especially from this perspective, because this series is a black series right now. Sam is the main character. Yeah. Um, we haven't really had much of that at all in the Avengers. So so we're going to... So so meanwhile, all this is happening. Meanwhile, into Switzerland? Can I sweet? Quick... Oh, wait. Yeah. I wanna, Switzerland. I want to add my thought. It's like, we haven't really had that much in the Avengers because... Black Panther existed in his own idealistic that society yep. that did not deal yep. with the struggles that a black American faces. So yes, mm-hmm. there was a black Avenger, but he had a different life. One of high powers, a king and prince. Yeah. It was completely yes, different yes. than what he, Sam has to go through. I think the word there yes, is black. He was black. Excellent. He was a black American. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, uh, uh, when they were describing that movie, were talking about how Black Panther was a good example of black excellence. And which pointing I have out, yeah. to honestly say is pretty accurate for that for that tone of that movie. Um, so as we were as uh, that's an right. So as I was uh, corrected by Star Shadow in Switzerland, while all this is going on, we are uh, with Mister Future Captain Falcon. I did not know that. I mean, uh, Future Falcon, <laughs> uh, Mister Torres. He's he's. Uh, he promised Sam that he was going to follow these these world uh, the flag smashers on the internet, but instead he decides to go to one of these 
what seems to me like a flash mob robbery. Yeah, like here. <laughs> it really was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it now. And so, like, I'm not sure who that guy in the mask is. Is he still the Leaper guy? No, it was a different guy. That's what I think it was a different guy. Okay, so whoever that person is, it's got to be on some kind of super soldier oh, yeah, serum he, he of is, some sort. Yeah, he's definitely super powered. Fucking tossing him, like grabbing him and just. Whoosh. Yeah, that that was. Um, there's there's something, uh, and I think that's you know David's point earlier. That's that this is the these are the bad guys, right? Um, and this is the threat to the world right now is that there's this group that is trying to destabilize the world governments and they feel like, you know, things should go back to the way the, before the, the blip happened. And, um, but as a, what they're exactly why robbing a bank is necessarily going to destabilize a world government. I don't know, but, um, there's about a, about a Swiss bank. Like, that is, yeah. There, uh, do we think that there is still, <laughs> The Avengers, and I think we need to make sure to wrap up the point at the end of Endgame, at which kind of we see Black Widow sitting around the monitors and explaining how pretty much everyone is gone, and there's not much help, and then several of the people who were there are gone. We don't have Vision, we don't have uh, Tony, we don't have uh, Steve, Mm -hmm. Um, and then the people that were supposed to replace them were kind of like Wanda and everyone else were stepping up. And they were like Ant Man, and they were all like there, like basically waiting and like to be stepped in as the new Avengers because Tony was trying to plan for that beforehand. But not Tony and is gone, and none of that really went to fruition. So after after the two leaders went, we've not actually seen at all a single get together of the Avengers again. They were there, yeah. and like even Thor's gone. Thor's with the Guardians. That is yeah, he's on space I stuff. can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's gonna be crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm trying. We're, we're trying to trying to stay on. To, we're trying to stay on topic. Um, I just thought it was important because that is a question. It's like, yeah. where are the Avengers? And it's like they're pretty much not there. There's yeah, not I mean, many left. Now. It's very much. It's the same. It's the same uh, question that was asked in uh, Far From Home. It's like, where are the Avengers? And that that I don't know if that'll be answered in the series. But that's still very much a question that was present in WandaVision and in the show and in, you know, we'll, I guess we'll see. Uh, but even Spider-Man was kind of like asking and they're like, oh, they're off world doing different shit. They're gone. They're not here. That's what they're. But he was also being lied to by Mephisto. So yeah. not Mephisto. Uh, uh, what's his name? Well, um, fuck. You messed me up. Fuck. What's his. Uh, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Mysterio. Helmet Mysterio. Yes. yes Mysterio, Mysterio was lying to him up to that point. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. Yeah, like, we all know Mephisto's not in the MCU. Not yet. <laughs> so, I th- so we're kind of reaching to the end, because I, I think right after that scene, we go back to Falcon. You know, he's kind of coming back from, uh, from you know, the whole bank fiasco. And then he is, you know, fighting with his sister. Of course, it didn't go as well as he thought it was going to go. And then the biggest what the fuck moment of this episode. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Like yep. I was, yep. I was like, what the fuck? Okay. Why do they have to pick such a fucking ugly Captain America? <laughs> so, so that should be problem with that. That is not America's ass. Um. So, <laughs> so here comes. So there's this senator. I think he's the senator of something, and he's he's talking about how America. Needs to be back on the forefront. Very much, in my opinion, my my own personal opinion, not the opinions of anybody else on the podcast. But he's talking very much white nationalist rhetoric and Mm -hmm. talking about how America needs to be strong, America needs to face the world head on, and needs to and in order for all of that to happen, we need to stand behind a symbol. And who walks out? Motherfucker. Fucking John Walker, U.S. agent. And he is candling the Captain America shield that was donated to the Smithsonian. It is the biggest slap in the face to end the episode. And then that's where we are. We're at the credits. Yeah. They, they, first off, they did not consult Sam. Sam had no clue. Sam's getting surprised there. Head over kind of like, what? 
as the TV goes on and like even his sister comes in and is like, you want to watch this? And we don't know Bucky's reaction. Bucky's not there. Yeah, we don't know. We don't that's know a Bucky's very that's yet. a good observation. What what were your what was the thoughts going through your guys' head? Like what were we, what was happening when 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 that was going on? That this is not America's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously that, but also it was. It, it's a little too convenient that it happened right after the bank robbery. Well, that's fair too, because like I said up to this point, what was the driving point? That put him there. There's nothing at all that told us that we needed a Captain America. See, like, so that means there must have been a coincidence, like here's or a thing. reason, I or know, purpose. I know you guys want. I know you. Got, I know you at least want to go for that Hydra agent or super evil. But no, actually, John Walker is a good guy. John Walker, U.S. agent, is just pretty much just like a super FBI person or something like that. He's very much. Yeah, he's like. The, yeah, he he is the. Guy Gardner of the MCU. Exactly. That's exactly who he is. He's just, he's, he's just the guy in the suit. He, I don't even think he's got any super soldier or anything. No, he's just, he's just there to look pretty. Yeah. Even though Cruz says he does. So he's basically, you know what this scene kind of gives me? Flashbacks to uh, actually Captain America, the first Avenger, right? Where, you know, he, here comes Steve. He's all oh, yeah, like juiced up and mm-hmm. shit. And, you know. Like during his all, whole party days, yeah. Exactly. All he is is like just doing this whole Bond thing. Oh, there, he's a figure. He's not actually a superhero in the beginning. They, he, they make him first yep. just a symbol. And they're like winning photo ops. And yeah, he's just, he's just a showpiece. And, and I feel that's what I feel like that's what John Walker is here in this situation. I know, Dad, you know a little bit more about the MCU history and, and comics in general. So uh, what do you, what was what was going on in your head when you saw John Walker come down those steps? Uh, I mean, uh, I figured that was, I and mean, from the trailers we kind of knew that was going to happen. That there was going to be this kind of um, person in taking the captain's place and kind of. Um, so, but uh, but yeah, he is he is more of a kind of a corporate tool. Uh, and more of kind of just a spokesperson rather than a actual, um, uh, you know, really superhero. I don't and he's he very. Has... Sorry. I was going to say, I don't see his huh? videos in Far From Home. So you got blipped. <laughs> and <it's>... Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a it's definitely a situation where they are. They needed they needed some someone to take that mantle. Um, as to why exactly this is the time, I don't know. It's, that's uh, hopefully that's something they'll reveal later. And I think this is, will be the impetus to give Sam the reason to actually you know want to take the mantle and to uh, to do it because I, I think the ultimate goal here is by the end of the series is to get Sam into the Captain America. Um, maybe he can be Captain Falcon. Uh, as Hachi keeps liking to say, oh uh, you know, he'll be the Captain America of the sh- of the of the Avengers. Um, but and and I don't know what will happen to John. Uh, like if he'll maybe step into the would I forget the agent U.S. agent um, yeah. U.S. agent. Yeah, um, we'll see what happens. US but it was it was definitely a kind of a big old fuck you to Sam's considering he turned over the the shield the yeah. shield as a. For the Smithsonian. Yeah. Um, I wonder if this will, if this episode, if this series will eventually, oh, like start popping up like other countries version of Captain America. Cause that was a thing at one point. Like you had yeah, like there's... Captain Canada and Captain Britain or something in the comics. So I'm... like, I'm almost, I'm almost waiting for this. Cause this is going to be amazing. if that's what happens. Wait, who's the daddy and like um, the, the Russian daddy in the new Black Widow movie? Oh God! I forgot that movie was. <laughs> like I'm yeah, because there's that as well, that. right? I'm looking forward to that, Daddy. Um, what Is was the guy from that? Stranger Things though? Yes, Hopper. that's yeah. right. That's yep, that's him. Mm-hmm. So I do want to remind you: there's another rhetoric that follows from Wandavision <laughs> that is very similar about stuff that they call their property. 
Remember when they stood over uh, Vision's body and he said, that's not Vision, that's our property, that's the U.S. property, and that's so much by yeah. and not belong. We can't just leave that leave it there. That belongs to us. Red Guardian, yeah. And you know what else is also vibranium just sitting there in large amounts that the U.S. government most likely believes is theirs? And that's the shield that they are going to especially... <laughs> ironically ironically when that when the memorial scene was happening i did i did honestly and 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 cruz will be witness to this i did honestly say you know what sam that's an awfully a lot of vibranium to just be leaving in this box here you shouldn't just you shouldn't be just leaving this box that's a lot of money there (laughs) but yeah yeah wakanda's not gonna be happy about that (laughs) yep so then I guess from that point on, we get to the credits. And unfortunately, like WandaVision, for the first episode, no post-scene credits. So interesting thing about the credits, though, interesting thing about the credits is if you do honestly watch all the credits, you'll see all the propaganda that the U.S. is doing with John Walker. So you have stuff like Cap is back, John Walker as Captain America. It's almost creepy how quick they're replacing Steve you mean Rogers. the giant capitalistic market and system and country that is obsessed with money and like giant corporate symbols turning a symbol of like patriotism into something they can exploit and make money from out of fake like heroism? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Am I not supposed to say that? Well, we also that? know. We also know that um, there was a casting for uh, Carl Lumbly. And there's a good possibility he may come in as a um, black Captain America. So before Steve was Captain America, uh, the U.S. government was experimenting on uh, black soldiers uh, with the super serum, superhero soldier serum and had actually created a, a black Captain America. And so there's a possibility that Sam may find out about that. And um, that, that would be wild. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Wow. Again, again, the United yeah. States doing more of its normal <laughs> shit, like experimenting on black people yeah. with things before they do it on white people. So interesting thing, this series is actually headlined and directed, excuse me, by a black director. He actually fought to get this show made. So it's very interesting, and you can definitely see that, um, mm-hmm. especially in the black focused scenes, like mm-hmm. you know, in Louisiana, and you know, even the tiny little family things. They're making their their crawfish st- kind of stuff. Um, so it's very, I'm very interested because the last time we had a black person direct anything Marvel, I think it was uh, black, black Panther, and it was fucking amazing, and it was really good. So I'm really, I'm really happy to see where this is going. Um, uh, and uh, I guess that's really it. What's any last words you guys want to say? I mean, I pretty much led this entire discussion, but um, well, you did just watch the movie, well, the episode right before this as like a replay, so it was freshest in your yeah. head instead of ours because I'm still banking on it from yesterday. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so, what do you guys? I guess what do you, what, what was the biggest standout moment for you guys on this episode? The really intense close-ups in Bucky's therapy. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, they were me, so yeah. like right there. It made you super uncomfortable. The therapy scene was definitely mine. Yours? I don't know if I actually had a scene in this one that like drag. So I will say, in comparison to Wandavision, I was happy about the action-packed like intro they gave us because it's what I asked for. It's what I wanted. But I also don't feel like I had as many iconic scenes like as the first episode gave me of WandaVision or almost every episode of WandaVision gave me that was just constantly feeding me these unique, interesting situations that I was just like in. That that was the style well, that they were going for. Um, I feel like I was back in the first part of a movie. Mm-hmm. And even yeah, but and normally the best part of even Marvel movies is parts where they get to banter and go back and forth and have fun, <laughs> and those are their most memorable parts of the movie. Not the hey, I fun fucking punched the bad guy, and we didn't even really get that yet. So the bad guy punched them. Um, so I'm not much for funerals. 
Uh, I guess I, I guess probably if I was going in from a personal critique of scenes I thought had value that the director did, it probably was closer to the end with the when they were trying to get the money and what he was trying to do and kind of their situation. That was a good because scene I thought that was the most valuable thing that they put in yet from a perspective giving a reminder to us of who Sam is that he is also a Black American facing real Black American things. And not just the Falcon. And it doesn't matter that he's the Falcon, that he is still a black American. And the, the country will remember him first for being a black American before all the things he's done as the Falcon. Dad? Uh, for me, it was uh, when Bucky goes to see uh, his uh, Mr. Uh, Nakajima. And he realizes, or you, you they reveal that the guy that he killed in his flashback was his son yeah. was the, the old guy's son. And I, I think that was to me, that was probably, I thought that was a great connection and uh, it actually, that kind of, you know, kind of was a little bit creepy and kind of weird that he is trying to make amends for this somehow. I have no um, to do that. <laughs> Yeah, say, you can constantly, constantly try to make amends for your past, but living in your past is a bar you'll never pass. It will get over. He's going to be stuck, and something in his character development is going to have to help him move forward. You can't just keep moving forward by going backwards. It doesn't work that way, and that is going to be his most crucial part of his character. I give him credit for wanting to take care of the people that were harmed by his actions, but there's only so much he can do. He's going to get yeah. busted if he keeps at this. And I think that might be what they'll do to show him that he's going to get stuck. Because he's going to have to get stuck to realize he's got to go the other way. And he's got to go forward. Yeah. Now I actually think about this now. Like, I wonder if Tony Stark is on his apology list. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, he can't apologize to him now. He's Oops, dead. I killed your parents. <laughs> so, I killed your parents. <laughs> Well, he, he could uh, he could apologize to uh, Stark's daughter. He like, killed your grandparents. Ooh, true. And then your dad found out about it, and Steve and I beat the shit out of him. And <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry, you don't have any grandma, or grandpa. Yeah, but to be I mean, honest, here, grandpa was kind of a dick. So you probably are going to be better off not having that pressure. He was cool yeah. with Agent Carter. Okay, <laughs> he was a dick. Tony had like some of the most severe daddy issues of all the Armando MCs. He really does. He really does. So, also, is Agent Carter even canon anymore? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Okay. So this was really. So fun. Agents, I I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this doing this little podcast. I enjoyed talking Marvel with a bunch of people, especially with Dad. Dad's awesome. Um, so <laughs> Star Shadow's awesome. Star Shadow's awesome too. Yes, I'm just. <laughs> Single them out. I haven't, I haven't brought Star Shadow into these conversations, and now having having Star Shadow around, it was it was a pretty it was a pretty it's like it's a nice little four way. To be fair, like <laughs> what gave us this idea is normally after every week of any episode of anything we watch, the dad we watch with dad, he almost calls us up immediately after. And well, we what talk, did you think? And we then talked we talk for like for an like hour. Hours. So we're like, we have a lot of gold here. Why don't we turn it into a podcast? And that's that's what it is. Um, we're going we're gonna to do this for uh, all of Captain America, and then we are going to go back and do, uh, do some, uh, some WandaVision. WandaVision, WandaVision. Uh, because, uh, because there is going to be a little bit of a break between uh, this show and Loki. Well, so that's, uh, that's our first episode. Really good episode. Really good chat, guys. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Star Shadow. Uh, and, of course, thanks to my partner. Um, for being part of this uh if you've listened all the way here and still haven't watched the first episode you got spoiled i'm sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> um did but, you at least put like a big spoiler warning on the label so people don't pop in and go fuck um maybe i should do that because like every, we're probably gonna like turn to our phones listen and people if are gonna i turn like, the i fucking hate you right I now i called the title captain falcon all right i already started off on the wrong foot okay <laughs> so join us next week thanks guys for watching and uh 
en- enjoy your day. There's no post credit after this this exit. There's no there's no post credit scene. Sorry guys. <laughs>